Hey guys, in the last video we got our GraphQL subscriptions working and all the bugs fixed. So now we're able to say hello and we see it pop up here and we can switch channels and everything works nicely. Now I want to go back and fine tune this and secure it. Because right now anyone can subscribe to our new messages subscription. And we really want to lock that down and only let authenticated users and users that are part of the channel or the team access it. So I'll show you this vulnerability right now. So we are able to subscribe to it um, using subscribe to more here, but you can also subscribe to things in graphical. But to be able to subscribe to them, you have to make a quick change to our server. Um, so the graphical endpoint, we just have to point to where our subscription endpoint is. Kind of like how we give an endpoint for the GraphQL endpoint, uh, our subscription endpoint is a separate one. And here we prefix it with WebSocket, um, and it is at localhost 8081, similar to right here. And then we do slash subscriptions because that's our path there. So, subscriptions. And this basically just tells Graphical where to subscribe. So, now over here, if I give this a refresh, I can subscribe to the new the new uh, channel messages. So I want to subscribe to channel one. And because we're not stopping anyone from subscribing, we're able to subscribe okay. So we get this little message that say your data will appear here. And if I type stuff like, um, this is a private message, it pops up here. So we're leaking these messages to anyone who subscribes. So we want to make sure and lock it down and say only people with JWT tokens and people that are part of the team can access this. So how do we do that? Well, here's how Apollo suggests doing that. You can actually pass a token as a connection parameter, kind of how we're doing it with our queries and mutations. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to grab this connection params, and this is where we create our WebSocket. So this is in our Apollo JS where we're all basically setting up our Apollo stuff. And here's our WebSocket links. We're going to add that as an option. So on our connection param, we're going to have a token, which we get from local storage, storage.get item, and we're going to pass in token. And then we're also going to do our refresh token, refresh token. All right, so then we need to be able to handle these guys, these tokens on the server. And the way it suggests doing that is with a on connect um, function. So we're going to copy this on connect function and we put this where we initiate our subscription server. So here's my subscription server. I'm going to paste this in here. Um, we can get rid of all this stuff. I'm just going to say return true. And right now I'm going to comment everything out and then just console.log the connection param so you can see what's happening. All right, so here's the logs. Now, watch me as I subscribe to this. We just subscribe to it. Here is what that looks like. So here is an empty one. Here is where the token's at. This token is coming from our front end over here. And if I just refresh this again, we'll subscribe again. And we see the tokens are here. And if I subscribe again from graphical, we get no tokens. Um, oh, it didn't, didn't. Let me refresh. There you go. Subscribe again. We get no tokens. All right. So we can basically make a decision. Oops. We want to do this on the server side. We can make a decision here, destructuring to get the token and the refresh token. So basically, what we want to check here is first whether we get a token and a refresh token token and refreshed token. Um, if not, we'll throw an error. Um, missing auth tokens. And then here we want to verify both of these tokens. And this is going to be the same procedure that we do up here with our add user middleware. So I'm going to copy that and paste that in here. So first we're going to verify the token and we have a user. Now I'm going to create the user up here. So I'm going to say let user is equal to null. And then 
I'm also gonna make this an async function and I'm gonna say call this payload and I'm gonna say user is equal to payload.user and then here we're getting the refresh token from the header but we already have it from here so we can delete that here we're refreshing the tokens that's good because we go to this catch block if our regular token is invalid and then here so here we're actually returning the tokens to the user to refresh them um, I'm not sure how to actually do that from WebSockets I don't know if you can just send uh, tokens back in the request you might be able to but I'm not sure as of now so we're just just not going to refresh it when you do WebSocket connections all we're going to do is say um, user is equal to new tokens dot user so there's two ways to get this user we either verify the token and we get the user or we get the user based on refreshing the token so here we're going to check if user or we're going to say if not user we're going to throw new error missing off or we'll, we're not missing invalid auth tokens right okay so here we know the user is authenticated at least so let's give this a try and see if we're able to subscribe okay so ideally we should get an error here let's see and we don't so let's see what's happening with that um, I'm guessing the tokens are getting passed in so console.log token Um, we saw it being passed in as empty, so I'm not sure why this is not throwing an error. It's even undefined here. It's just not throwing. I guess maybe. Let's see if we throw an error. So console.log throw error. Maybe um, graphical just doesn't show the errors. Oops. So run that. Yep, we're supposed to be throwing an error and it even says unhandled promise rejection missing auth tokens. Okay, so that is working correctly. It just didn't show it here for whatever reason. Let's make sure we're not actually able to still subscribe. So A, good, A does not show up here. So it did block it. And I wanna make sure it looked like the subscription for this is still working. Yep, we're able to connect okay because we do have a token and a refresh token. All right, so the next thing we want to verify is that the user is actually um, in our team, um, whether they're a member or they're the owner. And it'd be very, so right now, the way we have it set up is kind of annoying to be able to make that check. Because right now we don't, we kind of have it split up between two things, our team, so let's go to the models real quick. Our team has an owner field with a foreign key owner. And then we also have a members table, which has the members. So I would first have to check whether the team owner and then check if they're not a team owner, whether they're the member of the team. And I don't want to do two checks like that. That's kind of annoying. So what we're going to do is we're going to refactor how we're doing this. Instead of having an owner on the team, we're only gonna have team members. And then a member, it's gonna have a property of whether they're the owner or not, or whether they're an admin, which however you wanna say that. So that's what we're gonna be doing in the next video is changing this up so that we're able to handle our use case over here better. Because really what I wanna do next is really something like this. So models.member and then just find one and say where and we're gonna say const member is equal to await and we want to just check right here so we don't care whether the owner or not we just care if they exist so we need to pass in a team ID which I don't know where we're getting that we'll say one for now and also we have this user so we're gonna say user ID is just equal to user ID and so we need to be able to pass the team ID in as well. So that's something we'll be doing in the next video as well. 
So, and then we'll just say if member, or if not member, so we didn't find a member that was part of the team uh, that they're trying to subscribe to. And this actually could be a channel too when we go to private channels. But uh, we didn't find a user or a member of the team and with this user ID, so we're gonna throw a new error. They shouldn't be able to subscribe. So in our next video, we're gonna finish this up and get this working. We're gonna be putting a dynamic team ID here, and we're also gonna change this our member table over so it's more generic. So that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, the code will be up on GitHub.